My name is Dimitar and I'll be taking you through the complete Power BI practical course. For the past four years, I've been working as Power BI developer for some of the biggest, most recognizable brands worldwide. I've been building business intelligence solutions for various industries such as retail, banking, automotive and healthcare. This course is the perfect one-stop shop for those who would like to pursue careers as Power BI developers. You will learn practical and transferable skills which will transform you into a highly skillful individual which will be invaluable for your future career. So get excited as you've come to the right place and your journey into the Power BI world is about to begin. First, we'll begin by familiarizing ourselves with what Power BI actually is and obtain a free copy at Power BI Desktop. That's right, you'll receive a free copy of Power BI Desktop that will be yours to keep so you can install it on your machine with full updates from Microsoft. Even if you're a Mac user, that's right, I've got a non-technical solution for all Mac users out there so they can follow along. Now, I do understand that some of you may have had previous experience with Power BI or other BI tools and will be more interested in the advanced topics covered later in this course. However, this course starts from the very basics in order to make it suitable for all Power BI enthusiasts out there. If you feel like certain lessons are too basic for you, feel free to jump straight to the exercises or the later sections which will cover more advanced topics such as DAX functions. Once we've covered the basics, I'll show you a number of Power BI best practices which will transform you into a Power BI developer. By the end of this course, you'll be able to understand the difference between import and direct query and how to choose the correct data connectivity for your database. Create your own data models inside Power BI. Build hierarchies. Apply data transformations using Power Query. Ask questions to your data and receive answers using plain English language. Get a solid understanding of DAX. Learn when to use measures and calculated columns. Did someone say time intelligence functions? Finding out month-on-month -month numbers has never been easier with the help of a simple measure. Use logical statements to enhance your reports. Yes, we are talking about if statements, else statements, or statements. Introduce the wow factor to your dashboards. Learn how to style your visuals, fonts, and backgrounds. Create interactive drop-down menus and customize your report navigation. Secure your dashboards by creating user roles and stop worrying about who's got access to your data. Build completed end-to-end -end dashboard solutions. After each of the main sections, there will be a mini quiz consisting of six questions followed by a practical task where you'll be asked to build a project inside Power BI to truly cement your knowledge. In section six, you'll find your final project where you'll be asked to create a sales dashboard for the sales team utilizing all your knowledge acquired throughout the course. Following section six, there is a bonus lesson. Besides obtaining practical knowledge that can be applied straight away into the business world, this course will give you a free copy of Microsoft Power BI, 60 days worth of free access to Power BI service and the ability to ask questions. So what are you waiting for? Dive straight in. Let's begin your journey into the Power BI world together. Power BI is a business analytics solution that lets you visualize your data and share insights across your organization or embed them in your app or website. Power BI pulls data together and processes it, turning it into intelligible insights, allowing users to generate and share clear and useful snapshots of what's happening in their business. Power BI is built on the foundation of Excel, so anyone who knows their way around Excel can easily transition into Power BI. It is specifically designed for organizations so they can run reports and get insights from the company's data. The insights and reports generated from this data can be shared with users both inside and outside of the organization. Want to know last year's sales? Are we on target this month? What's the projection for next quarter? No problem. Power BI can give you these answers and so much more. Unlike Excel, Power BI is built around the idea to visualize your data and see the KPIs that matter to you on the go. Forget about endless spreadsheets, complicated macros, and last minute report requests. Power BI is here to solve all these problems and provide a real-time insight into what is happening with your business. Power BI is built to work with big data in a fast, responsive manner, something that many other platforms struggle with. The platform integrates with other business solutions such as SharePoint, Office 365, Salesforce, MailChimp, Google Analytics, and many more. Regardless which data source you use, your data is in safe hands. Restrictions can be configured and applied to ensure maximum security and peace of mind to both end users and developers. So go ahead and get creative, drag and drop some interactive visualizations, publish reports on the Power BI service, collaborate with your team and take your insights on your smartphone or tablet. Power BI is here to serve your business. Power BI comes in two flavors. 
Power BI Desktop and Power BI Service. Power BI Desktop is a standalone application that is designed to build reports on a computer. Power BI Service is a content sharing service that offers Power BI Pro and Power BI Premium. To put this in layman's terms, Power BI Desktop is the go-to place for building dashboards and reports. It offers connectivity to more than 100 data sources and it includes the query editor to shape all your data into a data model. In addition to its data modeling capabilities, Power BI Desktop comes with the ability to install color themes, create measures in DAX, and use custom visuals from the Microsoft community. What is missing from the desktop version is things such as the ability to share dashboards, create gateway connections, building apps and workspaces, and paginated reports. Collaborating dashboards and sharing content between users is at the forefront of BI, but it comes as an additional cost. Organizations can subscribe to Power BI service and extend the functionality of Power BI. The service offering starts with Power BI Pro, which is the perfect solution for smaller teams. Power BI Pro is licensed by individual users. For example, if you have a team of 20 people that need access to your dashboards, you need to buy 20 Pro licenses to give users full access to creating reports and unlimited viewing of any of the created content. The more users you have, the more licenses you're going to need and the more expensive Power BI would become. For large businesses, it is recommended to switch over to Power BI Premium, which is the most expensive tire of Power BI and comes with on-premises report server. All content is stored on the premium capacity server and can be viewed by as many users as you want without the additional cost. Power BI is one of the best data visualization tools developed for data professionals. Unfortunately, Power BI Desktop is not available for Mac and it's not something that Microsoft would consider in the near future. According to Microsoft, it would take at least one full year of dev work to release a working prototype for the Mac, meaning that the Microsoft team will have to drop everything on the PC side of things and concentrate just on the Mac before they can release a working prototype for Mac. The main issue behind this challenge is not the actual application interface, but the fact that Power BI is running a full-blown Microsoft SQL Server analysis services in the background. The long-term plans for Microsoft are to develop more web-based capabilities on the Power BI side of things, which will kind of solve the issue with no Power BI for Mac. However, there is a workaround for Mac users. In fact, there are several options to choose from, both paid and free. The first option is to use a piece of software called Parallels. So Parallels can be found on parallels.com. So Parallels is a parallel-like application for Mac users where you can run Windows machine on your Mac. Unfortunately, Parallels is a paid application. If we go to buy now and go to new license, the cheapest option here would be 79.99 euros. It gives you access for home and student use. It's a one-off fee. Um, unfortunately, there are no updates going on with, with, uh, with this option. It will cost you 79.99 euros, but you get to use your Windows 10 as it is. This will be sufficient enough to run your Power BI on your Mac. Uh, another paid alternative available for uh, Mac users is a website called Turbo.net. So Turbo.net offers containerized application that you can download on your Mac where you can run Power BI as if it was a native application for Mac users. Unfortunately, Turbo.net is a bit more expensive. The pricing there is monthly. So the pricing starts at $99 per month, which can be a bit expensive for some users. The solution that I will show you in this lesson is free, but for 12 months only. However, it's not a technical solution, which means you don't have to be some geek techie person to solve this. I'll show you step-by-step step how we can run Power BI on your Mac for free for 12 months. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to install a piece of software from the App Store. The piece of software is called Microsoft Remote Desktop 10. So once we find it, we click on Get, and then install it on our machine. So now we've got Microsoft Remote Desktop 10 installed. If we click Open, let's see what this will do for us. Not now, we don't want to do that. So continue would like to access the microphone, yes. Would like to access the camera, yes, that's fine. So we need to add a desktop here. So our desktop here will be added through something called Amazon Web Services. In order for us to access Amazon Web Services, we need to go to the URL, which is aws.amazon.com. So I'm gonna to go to the first tab and type in aws.amazon.com, press enter. And what we need to do is we need to create an AWS account. Click on that. It'll take us to the sign up process. So again, this is a standard sign up process. It's going to ask you for email, password, account name as well. So we just need to type in our email address. So 
So account name would be, we need to set up an account name for AWS. So we can choose account type to be personal. So instead of professional, we choose it to be, instead of being professional, we select personal, select full name, phone number, so it's our personal phone number. This is where you need to put your address. And then create account and continue. Okay, so here's one thing. So it will require payment information. So this is something where it says when you submit your payment information, it will charge you one dollar. Your credit card, <clears throat> it will charge you one dollar. Your credit card as a verification charge to ensure your credit card is valid. So that's fine. This is something that will be uh, refunded once we complete the verification process. So that's fine. So this is where we need to enter some uh, credit card details. You can also use debit card as well. So once you're ready, you're gonna receive a text on your number just to verify that you are an actual person. Just typing in my verification code before we can proceed. Okay, perfect. So the identity has been verified successfully. We can continue. So the next steps, I'm just going to close these tabs in case we need to open more tabs. And we need to choose a support plan. Support plan. The support plan we're going to go for would be the basic plan, which is free. That's fine. We want a free plan. We don't want to. We don't want to develop our business plan, at least not yet. And this is our welcome screen. In our previous video, we explained why Power BI for Mac does not exist. And we've also shown several options, both paid and free. So currently we're exploring the free option. We've registered already for the Amazon Web Services. We've also downloaded an application for your Mac code, Microsoft Remote Desktop Windows 10. Now it's time for us to log into our AWS account and initiate the virtual machine building process. So what we need to do is we need to sign in. So now we're signing in inside our AWS account. So now we're inside the AWS management console. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to services and choose EC2. So this is the EC2 management console. The next thing that we want to do is we want to click where it says Ohio or uh, depending on your location, the suggested location, and choose a location that is as close as possible to where we are based. So the closer we are to the server instance, the faster our connection will be. So I'm based in Bulgaria, so the closest option for me would be Frankfurt. So I'm just going to go for EU Frankfurt. Perfect. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create some key pairs. Now, since this is our first time installation for us, we haven't created any key pairs. So we need to create some key pairs, which can be found from network and security and click on key pairs. As you can see, this is all blank. So we can click on create key pair. So key pair name, we're going to name this Power BI, Power BI key pair, press create. And as we can see, it's already downloaded the Power BI key pair. Now this is important and this is something that will be used within within this lesson. So please make sure that you've got you've got the file downloaded. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create an instance. So an instance will be created from the instances menu and choose instances. You don't have any running instances in this region. OK, that's fine. So launch instance this is what we need to press. Now we need to choose what sort of machine do we need so let's type something in such as windows what we want to focus here is we want to focus on the windows where it says free tire eligible now this is important for us because we want to select a machine that can a machine that can be used using our free tire so i'm going to choose the first instance so we, microsoft windows server 2019 base let's select on that one 
And already Amazon has selected the T2 Micro free tire eligible. As we can see, the configuration is powerful enough to run Power BI. So general purpose, that's, that's fine. It will give you a sufficient machine to run Power BI. Another thing here to point out is that despite this being a free instance, you can always upgrade this if you wanna upgrade it and just uh, tweak your machine a little bit. You will not lose any work whatsoever. So if you wanna keep it free, you can keep it free for the next 12 months. If you wanna upgrade it at any point during these 12 months, or maybe just decide to keep it afterwards, you can also, so choice is yours. So we're happy with the T2 Micro, so we can click on review and launch. Okay, so here's what we've got. T2 Micro, EBS only, that's fine. So next thing we wanna do is we wanna click on launch, choose an existing key pair. Okay, so our key pair is the Power BI key pair. I acknowledge that I have access to the selected private key. Click on launch instances. So your instances are now launching. Let's view the view launch log. So currently everything has been successful. Launch initiation complete. This is the instance that we've got. It's currently in running status. So what we need to do is we need to set up a name for our instance. So let's call our instance Power BI Dev. And once we are happy with the name, and obviously we can see that it's in, in a running state, you can click on connect. You can connect to your Windows instance using a remote desktop client of your choice and by downloading and running the RDP shortcut file below. We don't want that, but we want to get the password. Now, let's click on get password and see what happens. So it's asking us for the key pair path. So we need to upload the key pair that we've just downloaded previously. So this is where this Power BI key pair will become useful. So let's click on choose file and go to downloads. And this is our key. We need to upload. So let's click on decrypt password. So now we've got our password available. We've got our username available and you've got the public DNS available. So these are the three things that we need in order for us to connect remotely to the virtual machine that we've just created within the Amazon Web Services. So let's launch our uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop app and let's go to add desktop. Okay, the PC name will be this public DNS address. So we need to copy the entire thing. So public DNS, command C, command V. User account, yes, add user account. We wanna add user account. In our case, the user account would be username administrator and this is the password. So we're gonna copy the password and we're gonna type in administrator within the uh, username. So add me. Nice traitor, command V. Friendly name, let's call it admin. And let's click add. Friendly name would be Power BI Remote Desktop. Let's click add. And let's double click and launch our virtual machine. Yes, we want to click on continue. Now we are connecting to the virtual machine that we've just created. So what you see in front of you guys is the virtual machine within Amazon Web Services. It runs just like a normal Windows machine, just on your Mac. Um, again, this is a pretty much, this is a fully working copy of Windows 10. You can have this for the next 12 months for free. This is where we can install Power BI. In our next video, we're gonna go into detail on how to download Power BI for free and install it on our machine. Power BI Desktop is completely free for your own personal use. So to download Power BI, we need to go to the Microsoft website, which is powerbi.microsoft.com, and we need to go to the download section. This is a direct link that you guys see here. So from this page, we need to go to Microsoft Power BI Desktop. This is the version that we are after. So we're gonna click on download, and the download would launch. Once the executable file is completed, we're gonna launch the executable file, and then we're gonna go through the installation process. So the download is now completed and I'm about to launch the file. The installation process is a very straightforward process. You don't need to be the most technical person to complete it. It's a very, very easy, intuitive approach that Microsoft have adopted for this installation. So here is the Power BI desktop setup. We need to choose a language. In our case, it will be English. I'm gonna press next. Okay, so we need to press next here. 
we agree with the license agreement terms. I'm going to press next again. I'm going to choose an installation location. I'm happy to keep it on drive C. If you guys want to install it on a different drive, it's entirely up to you. You can change this by clicking on change and just choosing which drive you want to install Power BI at. I'm going to press next. Yes, we want to create a desktop shortcut. I'm going to press install and there we have it. The, inst the installation process is now launched and we need to wait for the installation to complete. So once the installation is completed, we're going to launch Power BI Desktop and see it for the very first time what this program is all about. Okay, our installation is now completed. Yes, we've ticked the box to launch Microsoft Power BI Desktop. We're gonna press on finish. We're gonna wait for Power BI Desktop to launch. And this is the welcome screen. As soon as you open up Power BI, this is what we've got. We've got the options to get data, got some recent resources. You can sign in to co collaborate and share content. The sign in section is something that's going to be covered at the end of this course. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can register for free for the uh, Power BI service where we'll get a 60 day free trial where we can upload our work inside the cloud. For now, we're quite happy with, with these changes. So we don't need to press any of these. We don't need to press try free or sign in. I'm just going to press close that. And this is one way we can bypass this message because if we press try free, it's going to um, transfer us to the Microsoft website. It's going to ask us to sign in and sign up. And um, it's going to be a process that's going to be documented at the end of this course. For now, it's important for us that we've got Power BI Desktop installed. Welcome to section three. In our previous lesson, we saw how to install Power BI on our local machine. So if you haven't installed Power BI yet, I highly recommend you guys do so in order to get the absolute maximum from this course. In this section, we're gonna investigate the query editor. We're gonna talk about import mode and direct query. We're gonna see how the two differ from each other and we're gonna talk about which one to choose. We're gonna investigate how to import data from an Excel file and launch Power Query. We're gonna see how to make some data transformations using Power Query. We are also gonna build our first data model and see what relationships are available in Power BI. We're gonna talk about active versus inactive relationships. We're gonna teach you guys how to enter data inside Power BI using DAX code. We're gonna talk about hierarchies and last but not least, we're gonna investigate what does Q&A do in Power BI and how we can ask real questions to our data and get some real answers in the forms of lines and charts. Power BI allows us to connect to multiple data sources, allowing for rich data transformations and quickly create reports and insights. The desktop version of Power BI comes with Power Query Editor, where Power Query transformations can be applied. To launch the Power Query Editor, let's add some data into our model. So I'm gonna to go to Get Data. From the pop-up window, we are going to choose our data file. I'm gonna double click that, and we're gonna wait for the Navigator window to pop up. Inside our Navigator window, we get to see the available tables inside this data source. Once we click on each table, we get to see a little preview on the right that's showing what exactly the table contains. Let's choose the dim underscore customer for the purpose of this demonstration. Instead of clicking load directly, I'm going to press edit and this will launch the Power Query Editor. So this is what the Power Query Editor looks like. On top, we've got the ribbon that contains five different sections, home, transform, add column, view, and help. The Home tab is very important. It allows us to add new sources to our uh, model. The Transform tab is specifically designated for data transformations, such as extracting length, getting first and last characters, splitting columns, formatting different columns, whether it's lowercase or uppercase, or if we want to capitalize things, and many more functions. The Add column is specifically designed for adding columns. It contains things such as conditional column, index column, duplicate column, applying functions on columns, even custom columns. The view tab is used to toggle whether certain windows or panes are displayed. It also provides access to the advanced editor. The help tab contains documentation, training videos from the Microsoft website, contains a hot link to the Power BI blog. In the center pane, we've got the data available for shaping and transforming. To the left, we have the queries available for selection, viewing, and shaping. 
And on to the right, we've got the query settings that list all the applied steps that Power BI has applied in order for us to get to the um, current state. So let's investigate. The first thing we've got the source, then we've got navigation, then we've got promoted headers. So what that means is that, do you see on the navigation side how our uh, headers are actually listed as first row and the headers are actually column one, two, three, four, and etc. So the promoted headers has applied this. So it's grabbed the first row and transformed it as a row header. And then final thing we've got is we've got change types. So that means certain data types have changed. So customer key has changed from ABC123, which means it's been a string. It's been transformed to a number. And these are the automatically applied steps. In our next video, we are going to discuss the differences between the import versus direct query mode. Connecting to data inside Power BI can be done in two ways. First way is to import a copy of the data inside Power BI. And the second option is to connect directly to the data source using direct query. To give you a better idea how these two work, I will connect to a SQL server that lives locally on my machine. So I'm gonna to go to get data, and then I'm going to choose SQL server. I will connect to the SQL server. Inside the server name, I will type in localhost because this is the location of the server that lives on my local machine. And as we can see on the data connectivity mode, we've got import and we've also got direct query. Now, import is the default option in Power BI. Let's click and see what happens. Once we click OK. So here it is, we've got all these different databases that lives locally on my machine. If we expand AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2014, we get to see all the data, all the tables, we get to see the preview window to the right, similar to what we saw in our previous lesson with the Excel source. So as you can see, we get to choose the tables that would appear in our data model. When we create visualizations and reports, Power BI uses the imported data. So whether we choose DIM customer or DIM date or DIM employee or any table we choose, it will get imported directly into the model. So which means the data will be grabbed from the database and it will be loaded inside our Power BI model. So that's why our model will grow as we add more data using the import mode. So the more data gets loaded inside the server and the dashboard gets refreshed, the bigger the Power BI file would get. So it's, it's almost like a sponge. It absorbs all this data in as soon as we hit refresh. And this is why it's called the import mode because we are importing data from a database inside our Power BI model. To demonstrate how direct query works, I'm going to close that and I'm going to get data again. So we're gonna to go to get data, SQL server, and let's investigate direct query. Again, I'm gonna type in local host. I'm gonna change the data connectivity mode to direct query this time. I'm gonna press okay, and let's see if anything changes visually first. So as you can, again, as you can see, we've got the navigator. We can expand all these different uh, databases. We can click on any table. We still get to see our preview. And it looks very, very similar to what we have in import mode. Well, there is quite a difference between import mode and direct query. So with direct query, as we create the dashboards and visualizations, Power BI queries the underlying data source. So which means the data source is always up to date. Unlike the import mode where we have to hit refresh if we wanna refresh the data. With the direct query, there is no need to refresh the data because we have connected directly. So we are connected live to the live data source. Now, direct query limits some of the data modeling and transformation options such as um, DAX functions. Not all DAX functions are available inside the direct query purely because of the way it's been designed to work. When working with the direct query connection, the underlying source must be queried and the time necessary to refresh the visualization is dependent on the performance of the data source. So if our data source is performing well, the visualizations and the data would get refreshed a lot quicker. So which means we'll, we'll grab the data a lot quicker. 
Direct Query is uh, designed for very large data sets that exceed one gigabyte. So if our data is less than one gigabyte, there is no need for us to use Direct Query purely because the import mode will do a sufficient job. It will also give us the full functionality of DAX. So if you are working with massive, massive amounts of data, then Direct Query is the way to go. If your data is less than that, you might as well just stick to import mode and uh, use the full DAX capabilities inside your reports. In the resources attached to this lesson, you will find an Excel file called data.xlsx. Please download this file on your machine. Data is at the heart of Power BI. As discussed in our previous lesson, the way we connect to each data source may differ. It might require additional drivers and services to be installed on your computer. However, once we have the data inside Power BI, we can apply some transformations across each table, regardless of the data source. Excel files are commonly used in Power BI, if not one of the most commonly used data sources which is why we're going to learn how to import data from an Excel file and apply some data transformations using Power Query. To begin, open up a blank Power BI document and click on Excel. Once we have identified the file, click open and wait for the navigator window to pop up. You have probably noticed that the navigator window looks just like the one we saw in our previous lesson, and you are correct. Once we have passed the address of the data source and user credentials, we get to see our navigator screen. Instead of looking at the full contents of a server, we're looking at the full contents of an Excel file. Each tab from the Excel file represents a table in the eyes of Power BI. To select the table to load into your model, you simply tick the box next to the table. Once we have ticked the data, we have the option to load it directly or transform the data. On this occasion, we're going to click transform data. This will launch the Power Query editor which is a powerful built-in tool for data transformations. We can do so much in Power Query, so let's take a look at what it can do for us. Let me over a few things. If this is the first time you're working with Power Query, in the middle of the page, you're going to find the dataset itself. On the left, you're gonna see the table that the dataset belongs to, and onto your right, you're gonna see applied steps. What is an applied step? Well, each time we make a data transformation, Power BI adds another layer on top, meaning that your actual data will not get affected by these changes, only the layers we build on top. We can do as many transformations as we want to. Let's take a closer look. So the first step for Power BI is navigating its way to the data source, which is here, and showing the available contents that belong to this data source. Then we move on to navigation, where we've already picked up the table that we want to read from our data set. As we can see, the item is dim customer. So the navigation step is actually the selection of the tables from the available tables within the data set. And as we can see, once this has been picked up, Power BI looks at this spreadsheet in a similar fashion as in Excel. As you can see, we have column one, column two, column three. In Excel, this will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and etc. In Power BI, these are still recognized as columns. However, Power BI is clever. It recognizes that there's a string value on the first row, so it applies another step and promotes the first row as headers. So move on to the next step, and the first row has actually become the header. So row number one is actually values across the entire data set. Then is applied another additional step called change type. Now, what does change type do? Well, Power BI transforms by auto-detecting the data type of some columns. For example, a column that is customer key currently is being read as whole number. If we take a look in the previous step, the data type is actually any. And there's a difference between any and whole number. We're going to touch on the subject of data types later on in the course. For now, it is important to remember that Power BI automatically applies the following steps, source, navigation, promoted headers and change type depending on your data set. In our next lesson, we're going to manually apply some additional data transformations. So you guys are gonna see more applied steps in the applied steps menu. Once we have our data loaded into Power Query, we can do some very powerful transformations using only a few buttons. When I create dashboards for my clients, I always skim through the data to check for columns that don't bring any value to our report such as columns with lots of nulls. In our case, let's take a look at the title column. 
If I click on this little arrow that's pointing down, it will show me the distinct values in the list. We have Mr. and Mrs. and no. I'm gonna hit cancel. And just by observing this column, we can see that most of it is just empty. So columns that contain lots of no's do not bring any actual value to our data. So it's generally best practice to remove unnecessary columns from our data set. To remove such columns, head over to the home ribbon, highlight the column that you wish to remove and click on remove columns. And all of a sudden our column is gone. It is removed from the data set. Let's take a look at our data set and see what other problems we can identify. So I'm scrolling across to the right and I'm looking at first name, middle name and last name. Now imagine this, you've got the following scenario. You've got the three names separate, such as in our case, and your task is to create a full name that contains first name and last name. The middle name is not important for us right now. It contains lots of nulls and it only contains a symbol, so it's not very useful for us. So let's say we have a scenario where we want to merge first name and last name together into one column and put this new column as person name. How do we do that? Well, we need to highlight these two columns. So to highlight, press control and click on the column. So now we have highlighted first name and last name. So what we need to do here is we need to merge together these two columns. To merge these two columns, you need to head over to the transform ribbon and from the transform ribbon, there is an option called merge columns, which is right here. So click on merge columns. A window is going to pop up asking how do we want to separate the merged columns. This is important because if we say none, these two columns are going to be merged together without any space. And we definitely don't want that. So we want to put a separator, the space, and the name column will be person name and we're going to click OK and all of a sudden we've got our person name right next to the middle name so this is where we've got the merged column we don't need the middle name anymore so we might as well just get rid of it so to get rid of middle name I'm just going to highlight middle name on its own by clicking on the middle name title and head back to the home ribbon and choose remove columns and there we have it, we've removed the middle name. So now we have the first name and last name put together next to each other inside one column. I want you to stop for a second and notice the extra steps that have been added to our applied steps panel. Each step that we've done is now listed with an appropriate name. However, this name is very generic to us. So we have removed columns and removed columns one. Now. We can add as many steps as we want to, and sometimes it will be very difficult to navigate our way through all the transformations that we do. So we've got the option to actually label these accordingly. So instead of saying removed columns one, we can right click on the step and click rename. So instead of removed columns, I can say removed middle name. Middle name, I can rename this step removed title so instead of removed columns removed title on merged columns rather than merged columns I can say uh, first name and last name merged let's say and so on so you can just label these accordingly so if you go back and you need to apply additional transformations or amend any of the previous transformations all you got to do is just read through the titles and realize which steps do you need to edit which steps you need to remove and so on we've covered removing columns and merging columns but what if we want to extract part of a column as a new column let's see what options we've got available in our data set so what we are looking for is for something useful, such as the email address. Let's say you've got a report that you need to create time logged against each user. Now, the email address contains the user along with the full domain name. This may not be necessary in your report and it will add a necessary cluster in your charts. What if you don't care about the part after the at symbol and you only care about the characters before the at symbol? Well, we can extract this and remove everything after the at symbol. How do we do that? 
Well, we go back to our transform ribbon and go to extract. We've got the option to extract length, first characters, last characters, text before delimiter, text after delimiter. In our case, it's the text before the delimiter because in our case, the at symbol is the delimiter. So it would be text before delimiter. The user interface here is very intuitive. It's asking for a delimiter and it will do the magic for you. In our case, this will be the at symbol. We put in the at symbol and we hit OK. And all of a sudden, our email address is now stripped off the additional information that was actually the at domain name. So currently, this is our username. Another useful feature would be to capitalize the username. What if we want to capitalize the username and make sure that all letters are in uppercase? Well, Power BI team at Microsoft have thought this through and we've got the option to transform this again with a couple of clicks. To do so, we highlight the column that we want to transform. We head over to format and say uppercase. Within seconds, our column will be transformed to uppercase. Each letter will be now uppercase. We've investigated a few transformations using the option to replace the current columns and apply the transformations on the columns themselves. But what if we want to keep our original columns and we want to have additional columns that are transformations of these columns? In other words, the results that we have to be kept as separate columns and the original columns to continue to exist as they were. Well, we can do that very easily. Instead of applying these transformations from the transform tab, all we got to do is go back to the add column ribbon. Unfortunately, we're going to have to remove these steps and reapply them, but this is absolutely perfect. So guys, if you want to hit the pause button and try to apply these transformations on your own, that would be perfect. So remember, the first transformation was to remove the title. The second transformation was to concatenate first name and last name together with a space between two. The third step was to remove the middle name. The fourth step was to extract the text before the delimiter at the email address. And the final step is to make sure that the new column, that is the username actually, is all uppercase. First thing I'm going to do is remove the steps. To remove a step from the applied step, all you got to do is highlight the step and click on the X button. Remove uppercase text, remove extract text, remove middle name, remove first name and last name, remove title, and the data set is now back to its original state. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the left, find out the title column, highlight the title column, and head back to the home ribbon. Again, we need to remove this column, so we click on remove columns. The title column has been removed. I'm gonna scroll a bit to the right and highlight first name and last name. Remember guys, hold control and left click to highlight columns. Go back to add column and from there, we wanna say merge columns. So the merged column will be called person name. Person name separator will be a space. Hit okay. We're gonna scroll all the way to the right and voila, we've got person name all together. The next transformation that we needed to do is to remove the middle name. In our case, we don't need the middle name, so we're gonna head back to the home ribbon, click on remove columns. Transformation number four is go back to the email address, highlight the email address, go back to add column, and go for extract, text before delimiter, Specify the delimiter, the at symbol. We've got a new column right at the end. It's called text before delimiter. We don't want to have our column called text before delimiter. So I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to highlight the text right here in this title bar where it says text before delimiter. And I am going to say user name. I'm going to press enter and our column has now been removed. I am going to highlight this column and go back to format. Actually, we've got the option to have this even as a new column with uppercase. So I am going to use the format option from add column. So this username column will be transformed into an extra step that will transform the username into uppercase username. 
These are all the steps that we've applied, all the transformations that we've applied, so you guys know how to do them on existing columns using the transform ribbon, or if you want to add them as separate columns, you gotta use the add column ribbon.